Why is it that when I engage my four-wheel drive and I try to turn to the right or to the left, my steering wheel binds up on me? That is a great question, and I have found that there is a severe lack of proper education for a lot of people out there in actually understanding how your vehicle's four-wheel drive system works. So today, I think we're going to dive into that. We're going to explain what's going on underneath your vehicle when you engage it, why it's there, and those little nuances that it has when it's kind of misbehaving or not working correctly. So you know what? Stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this. Thanks for tuning in, folks, and once again, welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners. My name is Josh, and today we are discussing your Jeep's four-wheel drive system, how it works, why it works, and what's really going on down there beneath your feet. So as you can see, we kind of have things set up a little differently. I'm going to use some visuals, and I'm actually going to show you what's going on when you engage your four-wheel drive. But you know what? Let's not waste any time, shall we? Why don't we dive right in right here? So this is what's going on underneath your vehicle. Up here, you have your front wheels. Over here, you have your back wheels, just so you understand the orientation. Right here in the center, this is your transfer case. We're going to get to that in just a minute. When you're driving in normal conditions, dry pavement, sunny days, going to the park, going to the store, going to work, doesn't matter. The vehicle is primarily in two-wheel drive. As you can see, all the power is being transferred to the rear two wheels. Now, should one of those wheels in the back start slipping, the vehicle will try to transfer the power from wheel to wheel in order to gain you the best traction. But the advantage of having four-wheel drive is that on demand, if you need it, you can take that power and transfer it to the front wheels. So let's just take this little lever and shift it down into four high. Now, as you can see, the transfer case is active. This is the differential that's in the center of your vehicle, and it's now sending power to the front two wheels. Sounds simple and easy enough, right? Well, what happens if the front wheels and the rear wheels start to slip? All right, folks, so just to clarify, when we're talking about slippage on your wheels, we're actually talking about the conditions that are not favorable. Uh, for most people, it's driving around in the snow, uh, maybe the freezing rain or icy conditions. Um, out here on the west side of the country, since we don't see a whole lot of that, severe rainstorms can cause the same situation in bringing the oils out of the pavement and causing slippery conditions. So when a wheel begins to slip, what that means is that your tire is no longer gripping to the surface that it is planted against, and therefore you are losing the ability to maintain forward momentum. This is actually the real purpose of a four-wheel drive system in a vehicle is to maintain that forward momentum. So in order to do that, we activate sending power to all four wheels. So let's back up. If we put it back into two-wheel drive and we talk about just what's going on in the rear wheels, 100% of the power of the vehicle is being sent to the rear wheels. Now, does that mean that both wheels have an even 50-50 split of the power? Eh, maybe most of the time. But the truth is, is torque is a finicky thing. It is going to follow the path of least resistance. So when this wheel over here hits the little wet spot, be it snow, mud, or whatever is slipping, and it starts to spin, believe it or not, torque, the sneaky little gun that it is, is going to transfer 100% to that wheel. So now your two wheel drive has just become a one wheel drive. Now most Jeep products have a traction control system built in where that's going to activate your analog braking system based on wheel spin and it'll try to add some resistance to that wheel that's slipping so that the power will naturally want to transfer to the wheel that might actually have the traction. It works eh, maybe 50% of the time. The advantage, however, of taking the transfer case in the center of the vehicle and splitting that torque 
50-50 between the front and the rear is odds are your front wheels are not going to be in the exact same situation that your rear wheels are in. So at least one of them somewhere could gain just a little bit of traction. In snowy conditions, in severe slippery conditions like ice, I have found that it doesn't really matter how many wheels have the power, the vehicle is still going to be difficult to control. But your Jeep is not designed solely for the use of driving through the snow and getting to work. Your Jeep, such as your Wrangler, your Gladiator, or even your Grand Cherokee, is designed to give you the opportunity to have a little bit more fun off the pavement. So when we start getting into situations where maybe we're climbing or descending, or maybe we're in a situation where the vehicle is kind of twisting a little bit, naturally the torque is going to go to the wheel with, that's right, the least resistance. So in order to slow that down, we have to control the torque in the motor. That's where the next setting comes in. So let's take this little lever and let's get you down into four low. Now there's a common misconception that four wheel drive low is actually better to maintain power going to your wheels. Eh, that's not really the truth. Four wheel drive low simply changes the gear ratio that you are transferring that power with. You see, when the vehicle is in two wheel drive or the vehicle is in four wheel drive high, your transfer case is spinning at a one to one gear ratio. Now what that means is that the amount of power coming out of your transmission and going to your wheels is equal from the transmission to the wheels. For low, when you transfer it down, is going to multiply that. Most of the Jeep products, with the exception of the Rubicon model, offers a 2.3 to one gear ratio, meaning that they're going to take the amount of torque and the amount of power in your motor and multiply it by 2.3 when it goes to the wheels. So what's the advantage of that? So the advantage of this is we know that the power coming out of your motor is usually gained the faster that that motor spins. So at a thousand RPMs, you're not really using the full amount of power that motor is able to produce. Whereas at 2,500 or 3,000 RPMs, you're getting a lot more torque and a lot more power out of the motor. Now, in order to take that power and get it to the wheels in a very slow moving situation, we need to multiply the torque that's coming out of the motor to the wheels so that you can hit that power band without the wheels spinning nearly as fast and still maintain that traction. That is the advantage of four low. But Josh, you said that the Rubicon is the exception. What, why does that make a difference? Okay, so here's what I meant by that. In your Sport Sahara, Mojave, all your other models of the Gladiator and the Wrangler, your drop down gear ratio in four low is 2.3 to one. However, the Rubicon was specifically designed for a little bit more adventure, more hardcore off-road use. So the transfer case in the Rubicon is actually a four to one gear ratio. Four to one. Think about that, folks. That means that you are taking the amount of torque and power that is coming out of the motor and you are multiplying it four times before it gets to the wheels. So they could turn a little slower and still have the backing of the motor in order to get that torque to the wheels and get the vehicle rolling forward once again. Okay, I think I understand that, but Josh, you said that you were going to explain why it is that when I turn the wheel to the left and to the right, the wheel binds. What's going on with that? All right, folks. So we've covered the basics on how the four wheel drive system works. We know that when you engage your lever from too high to four high, or even down to four low, you are changing the power transfer from wheel to wheel. But in order to understand truthfully what's going on 
when your steering wheel starts binding or what's going on when it doesn't feel right, especially on dry pavement, we need to explain how a differential works. So engineers had to find a way to connect both rear wheels to the engine without sliding and slipping on turns. The device which makes this possible is a part of the rear axle. It is called the differential because it can drive the rear wheels at different speeds. The differential looks complicated, but once we understand its principle, it is amazingly simple. A lot of people confuse differentials with axles. Yes, your rear axle and your front axle on your Jeep has a differential built in. But what that's doing is that is allowing the tire on the right side of that axle and the tire on the left side of that axle to be able to spin at a different speed from time to time. The most common example of spinning at a different speed is when you are turning. Now I want you to think about this, okay? If you take something that is five and a half feet apart from each other, and you want to make a circle out of it, okay? Then ultimately, the inside portion of that is going to pivot. The outside portion needs to rotate a whole lot faster in order to keep up with what the inside is doing. Now, when that happens in your Jeep, when you make a right-hand turn, your right rear wheel doesn't move nearly as fast as your left rear wheel moves. If that was a straight axle and there was no differential in the center to help compensate for the fact that those wheels are not moving at the same speed, you'd get a lot of this. <laughs> Your front axle is pretty much inert. It's always there. It's always moving. That's true. But it's there for the steering and the stability of the vehicle. So in normal two-wheel drive mode, there is no power, no resistance, no torque, nothing going to that front differential or to those axle shafts up front. So when you go to turn the wheel, let's say you're making a left-hand turn, your left wheel isn't going to move at nearly as fast as your right wheel, but that's okay because there's nothing else going on in that axle. So when you engage your four-wheel drive, you are bringing that front axle to life. Your transfer case is then sending 50% of your engine's torque and power capabilities to those front wheels. Well, naturally, when you do that and you try to roll forward or even drive in reverse, it wants those front wheels to do the same thing that the back wheels are doing. The difference is, is when you turn, the back wheels pivot. When you turn on the front, you are actually physically changing those angles and the pressure that's going into that front differential. The vehicle is trying to maintain power. It is trying to send 50% of that torque to both the right and front wheel. But when you turn them and you try to take off, one wheel naturally wants to go faster and therefore inside that differential, it starts to bind. When it starts to bind, you get feedback through the steering wheel, through the brake pedal, and it feels like it's doing this simply because you are telling it you want the power, but the wheels are not in a position to rotate independently. Every part of the rear axle has been built to withstand strains far greater than it will ever meet on the straightaway or around the corner. Folks, I hope that this helped to explain a little bit about how your Jeep's four-wheel drive system works, exactly what it is that's going on underneath your feet when you engage and disengage that four-wheel drive system. And I hope that it cleared up a couple of things about driving around in four-wheel drive on dry pavement. Uh, meanwhile, my name is Josh. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to put them down in the comments below this video. I'll get to them just as quick as I can. Or just like I've said in my previous videos, you can always shoot me an email. There's a link for that down in the description as well. In the meantime, safe jeeping. Have a good time, folks. Get out there, see the world, use your four-wheel drive. That's what it's there for. And we will see you next time. All right, folks, listen, quick, for the last 20 seconds while you're debating, if you're going to click on one of these or, you know, ditch me altogether, I just wanted to know, this is my first time playing with a green screen. How'd I do? I do all right? 
let me know in the comments down below. See you next time. Bye.